I want to start by saying that I'm not here to tell you that everyone should be coding declaratively or that you're doing something wrong if you're coding imperatively. This is all very context dependent anyway, as ultimately all declarative code is powered by imperative code underneath. What I do want to address is that I think a lot of people are missing the major benefit of declarative code without actually giving it a chance. For example, in one of my previous videos, I showed a declarative and imperative comparison like this. Now, I totally get why people would prefer the imperative example here. And I can even understand seeing this and thinking that people who go on about declarative code like this are just some sort of elitist code flexors who are more concerned about smart code that's hard to understand instead of code that just does its job and is easy to understand. But at least for me, I don't prefer declarative code because I enjoy making things harder for myself and everyone else. I do it because it is easier. So the problem with examples like this is that in isolation, the imperative approach is probably always going to seem easier and more intuitive. Even as someone who is very familiar with RxJS and declarative code, I think the declarative example here is harder to understand than the imperative example, but it misses the bigger picture. Declarative code like this does a lot more than imperative code. This is an entire definition of what this particular value is and all possible future changes for this value. It contains the entire behavior of whatever you are defining. So naturally it is going to hold more complexity than a single imperative call to change a value. But why should we want to do that anyway? Why have this one fancy declaration with more complex code when we could just have a bunch of simpler imperative calls throughout the code to set values in a more intuitive way? This is where I think it is easy to miss the value of declarative code. The benefit isn't obvious until you take in the broader context. So to give a feeling of the benefit of declarative code, I created this diagram, which I posted on Twitter. So I was making the point that declarative code looks harder, but it becomes easier as complexity increases. Whereas with imperative code, it is the opposite. Hopefully this gives a feel for the organized and composable nature of declarative code on a small scale just the behavior of a single variable in a component in this case. But this diagram can be improved as it still doesn't really capture the entire benefit of declarative code. As I just mentioned, the benefit of declarative code becomes more obvious as complexity increases. So perhaps a more fair representation would be this. This is still a relatively small and simple scenario, but I think it is enough to highlight the benefit of declarative code. With the declarative code, we have these well-defined containers for our values. These describe what the value is and how it can change. Not only does declarative code allow us to do this, but at least in the context of Angular, it also allows us to automatically react to changes. We can compose these values together and you can see this nice sort of downward flow of values being derived from each other. Anytime anything changes, anything that depends on it will automatically update. The imperative code doesn't have this kind of composability and it doesn't have the same sort of flow. With imperative code, there is much more manual fetching this and then setting that. The behavior of any value isn't contained within its declaration. We declare the value, but then we can change its value from anywhere. So understanding the behavior of that value means you need to search for anywhere that it's being referenced. Unlike with the declarative example, in the imperative example, we need to make sure we are making the right calls and updating the correct values when things change to keep everything in sync. Given that this is still a very simple example, you might imagine how the benefit of the organization of the declarative approach would compound as the application becomes more complex. And then it might start to make sense why people would want to bother with fancy operators like this just to try and keep all of the values behaviors contained within its declaration. So one more thing I want to point out is that I do not generally code hundred percent declarative. The example I used for this is not actually fully declarative. I generally prefer to do things like respond to click events by calling methods and having those methods next subjects imperatively. Nexting a subject is not declarative because you can next it with whatever you want we don't know what values this subject will emit just by looking at its declaration. It is possible to go full declarative and have absolutely everything in your application be composed from events, like using an event stream of a user clicking on a button, for example, rather than running imperative code inside of a handler. But at least for me, I think a little bit of imperative code can simplify the mental model and still delivers most of the benefits of the declarative approach. 
So I might change my mind on this in the future, but my point is that trying the declarative approach doesn't mean you can't ever write any imperative code. Identify the benefits you are trying to obtain, uh, this sort of modular organization and reactive flow, for example, and aim for that, rather than just trying to be declarative for the sake of it. All right, I hope this rant was useful in some way to you. Uh, if it was, please consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you again for the next video.